this next demonstration comes at a point in the curriculum where we've talked about measurement, we've talked about accuracy and precision. Now the concepts of accuracy and precision should already be established in the students before you do this activity. This is not meant to be an instructional activity, but a summative activity, wherein you recognize what the students have learned, cement it into their cognitive package so that they know what they've learned, and then you can go on and teach other things with it. It also comes at a point when we're talking about the design of experiments and that kind of uh, knowledge these students wouldn't have unless they pick it up in your classroom. So we're going to be designing experiments, we're going to be collecting data, and we're going to be looking at the results of that data. The way the demonstration begins is I have a deck of cards, and it is, the way I do it, a regular deck of cards. There is nothing uh, magical about the deck of cards. And then you need a volunteer, and we have our volunteer here. And what I'm going to do is be cutting the deck, and if you'll just put your finger in there to stop me, and then we'll have the deck of cards and show the card that was selected. Okay. okay, so you can play with this all you would like. But now I have designed an experiment to try and determine what the card was. Mm -hmm. All right, and like all good scientists, I have recorded the results of the experiment. And in fact, I've repeated the experiment three times and I have the result of those three trials. Let's look at those results here at the board. Here are the results of the first experiment. How would you characterize them? These results are probably not accurate, nor are they precise. Neither accurate nor precise. What does that tell us about this experiment? Well, it tells us it's not a very good experiment. Uh, whatever it is that I designed to do, it's not doing the job. And so I need to redo the experiment. I need to redesign it and come up with a better way of trying to figure out what that card is. And so the second set, I've done that. In this second experiment, here are the results of the three different trials. Well, this time I would ask the students, how is this data characterized? And this data seems to be precise, although not accurate. It has precision because the values are, in fact, near each other, although the suit's different. And it's still not a well-designed experiment. Now, whatever the, the experimental design is, it's doing the same thing repeatedly. But it's not achieving the results that we desired. So there's still something incorrect with the design of the experiment. The experimental design needs to be redone. And so I've done that. I redesign the experiment and get, after three trials, these results. Now, if everything works correctly, this is, in fact, accurate and precise. I have the correct value, so it is accurate, and they're all the same, and so it is precise. We have precision with accuracy. This is a well-designed experiment, an experiment that yields good results and is consistent in achieving those results. Accuracy and precision. I have a fourth set of data up here, and I think that's worth talking about as well. With this fourth set of data, I claim to have accuracy. If we take the average of the three trials and report the average value, once again we have the correct five of hearts selection. So we have accuracy in a sense, but not a very well designed experiment if it's giving these different results. And so the experimental design again leaves something to be desired. By looking at the data that we collect, we can learn not only what the right answer is supposed to be in our experiments, but we can also learn something about designing the experiment. The kinds of results that we get tell us a bit about the design of the experiment and how it might need to be redone. Now again, as I said earlier, this is an experiment, this is a demonstration, this is an activity that you want to use after the concept has been learned. Because this is not teaching it, it is reviewing it. 
because the students are probably just as you may be wondering how that is done. How do you do that? There is, as I've said, nothing special about the deck of cards. It is a regular deck of cards. I have predetermined, of course, the card that needs to be selected in order for the results to turn out like this. And so I make sure that the five of hearts is the card that is on the bottom of the deck. When I take the deck out and I show the students the cards, I try to keep that bottom card covered. And so as you can see, it is a regular deck of cards. And now if we can have our volunteer back here, that's where the real magic occurs. Because as I take the deck and I cut the deck, and now you want to close in and look at this deck, as I cut the deck, I still keep the five of hearts on the bottom. I drop the packet that I took, take out the bottom, drop the top. I always take a slice off the top of the deck. And then I ask the student to put their finger in when they're ready to stop. He puts his finger in. And of course, what I show is this card. Now, students could get argumentative, so you want to choose a student who will uh, go along with it okay and not push it, because I can continue to cut this, and no matter when they tell you to stop, that's the card that's chosen. Now, that again is not an easy thing to do. You can buy at a magic shop decks of cards that make it easier to force the student to select the card that you want. The cards that I have on the board are oversized cards. I think that adds something to the demonstration to have the cards. You could do it in other ways, of course. You can go to magic shops or even Target or some other stores like that and find these oversized decks of cards. You could even go to the internet and print out the back and the front of whatever cards you want. Now, if you're going to go to the store to buy these oversized decks of cards, you'll need three decks. So it can be an investment. But if you do have three different decks of cards, you can set up this experiment to give you different results as long as you prepare ahead of time knowing what card is on the bottom and what card you want to be on the bottom. You can then repeat the experiment and do it again with a different card on the bottom. And so the students from one class to the next class, oh, how did he do that? That's accuracy and precision and a bit of magic to cement the idea with the students. Thank you.